B power is not enough. We're going J. <laughs> time I build a car and bring it somewhere, one of the first questions I always get asked is, how fast is it in a quarter mile? Well, dang it, I'm actually gonna build a car that does a quarter mile. Welcome to VTech Academy. You're about to get schooled. Put on these guys, ain't no slowing down. A long, long time ago, we used to actually drag race occasionally. And one of the cars we used was this one right here. Kind of this wild flame retro EG, and it had a J series in it. We were taking this thing out racing, we did that for a few years. We sold it. Somebody else raced it for a few years. We bought it back and it's been sitting probably 10 years. Well, it's time to get it back out to the track. You guys may notice this sticker. For those of you in the know, this is a CT engineering sticker. Back when they used to be doing a lot of stuff. In fact, they used to do superchargers for J series. So maybe that's what we'll do. Let's supercharge this thing and see how fast it will go. I think that'll be a lot of fun. But the first thing we need to do Honda's got the new J-Swap ECU. We need to get an engine prepped, get it in the car, and uh, see what it'll do. This engine was our original setup. This actually is the old three-port head, and we use an AM EMS Series 2 on it. There had been rumor six or seven years ago that Honda was coming out with something, and they were going to use a single-port motor. So uh, we kind of just let it set, and we're working on other projects but now they've got that new swap ECU out. We're gonna put one of the single port engines in here and get it tuned up and see what kind of quarter mile it's gonna do. Uh, the AEM EMS, it worked fine for what we were doing it for. Uh, we just kind of uh, stopped drag racing after I crashed my Insight 10 years ago. And the car's been sitting ever since, but time to get back out on the track. So right now, this particular car was actually Built a long time ago, it was commissioned by Showcase Honda, a local Honda dealership. They sent it off to a hot rod guy. His name was uh, The Cobbler, and he was the one that did these custom metal fenders and also this uh, wild flame paint job. When we got the car, there was no hole in the hood. We cut that out. Unfortunately, the paint has gotten a little bit uh, ragged from that, so maybe we'll go with a different hood on here. We also want to try and do something with the interior, kind of put it like a street stock class interior in it. So it's gonna have, you know, dash, door panels, things of that nature. It also has a roll cage, custom roll cage, that was installed by Whitfield Racing. So that's in there as well. So the car is gonna be safe for going 10 second quarter miles. Now we need to see if we can put something in it that will do a 10 second quarter mile. We're gonna be running the smaller size 13 inch wheels with slicks, some lightweight wheels in the back, it has progress suspension. We need to do a few other things to it, but uh, it's gonna be ready to race here pretty quickly. So I can't wait to get it out on the track. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. So we have a 2007-2008 Acura TL motor, base model 3.2 liter and manual transmission. What we need is a 2007-2008 TL manual harness. I don't have one tough to come by. But what I do have is an automatic harness. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this automatic harness and we're going to modify it so that it's a manual harness. I've already gone to the trouble of unwrapping a lot of the stuff that was for the automatic controls. The vast majority of this is going to go away. What we're going to put on it when we're all done is backup lights. The reverse lockout because it's a six speed and both the uh, counter shaft and main shaft speed sensor wiring. So uh, there's a lot of extra things here, transmission range switch and solenoids and other stuff that is basically gonna go away. Uh, we'll strip all that out of the harness, add a couple wires and we should have a manual harness. All right, so when determining what we're gonna do with our wiring harness, is obviously since it's an automatic harness, we need to convert it to manual, but there were some other things I wanted to do too. So I opened up Honda's uh, software for uh, this uh, J-Swap and started looking at some of the things in here. Uh, I went into miscellaneous and I found out that we can actually disable uh, the second engine coolant temp sensor, which we don't need. Uh, the purge and evap can be uh, disabled, ELD can be disabled, EGR can be disabled, and uh, vent shut valve, evap, uh, 
and so these are a lot of things that we can remove from the harness. So that was, that was nice. The other thing is going into the calibrations, it talks here about uh, not EPA or copper compliant. This is not going to be a street car whatsoever. This is going to be uh, a drag car. Also, we we're able to turn off the secondary O2 sensors. So without those, that's another bunch of wiring that can come out of the harness. So we're simplifying it as much as we can. We're going to wrap it all back up. And uh, once that's done, uh, we're going to be ready to drop it in the car. The supercharger is actually a prototype made by CT Engineering for the Honda Ridgeline. That's why it's so tall, because the Ridgeline didn't really have a problem with hood clearance. So it's got a really nice big plenum, which should have really even distribution throughout the intake runners. We did try intake runners that were ported, but they're actually significantly larger than our plenum for our supercharger. So we decided to go ahead and go with stock intake runners. The supercharger, is a TVS supercharger, which I believe is made by Eaton. Oh wait, my hair's not done for the camera. Let's just do an idler pulley, <laughs> but we're not gonna do it today. Yeah, yeah. But we'll just do an idler pulley. So, I don't know, get a piece of string and put it on there and try to figure out what the length should be and then we'll, uh, Oh, yeah. then we'll go from there. One B power. Mm -hmm. B power is not enough. We're going J. We decided to use Hasport's EGJ1 mount kit. Now, Hasport makes two J series mount kits. Uh, one of them is EGJ2, and that one is set up for hood clearance. Now these engines are really tall. Obviously hood clearance isn't an issue with us. Uh, we weren't worried about that. So we use the EGJ-1, which actually maximizes ground clearance. Except for the jerky. Wow, that is so much taller than the normal It's a beast. Now that one, somewhere in there. The TVS superchargers are a lot more efficient and work better at higher RPMs than the normal blower Eaton makes. So we should be able to take this supercharger pulley, reduce it in size, spin this a lot faster, and maybe get a lot more boost. So I'm really curious to see what this is gonna be capable of doing when we get it out to the track. Uh, we're also gonna probably make a few other modifications to it, a bigger throttle body, maybe angle it downward. Right now it's kind of in the driver's line of sight, so maybe kind of difficult if your tree is on the right side, but we're willing to work with that. If we ever decide to do a flat bottom under here to help uh, with uh, aerodynamics and the drag, we have plenty of ground clearance with the EGJ-1 mount kit. Of course, this may cause a little problem with our aerodynamics. But uh, what the heck, we're still trying to figure out the hood situation, but I think it's gonna be really cool when we get it out on the track and, and see what it does. We're getting really close to firing this thing up. We've only got a few things left. We need to uh, make sure there's fluids in it. So oil in the engine, transmission fluid in the transmission, water in the radiator, our nice little tucked radiator. Next, we also need to make sure we've got the right half shaft on here. Hopefully we won't have to make any modifications to our axles. I think I need to put on the throttle body gasket. This one is uh, uh, not fresh, so we need to put that on. Then there's the alternator wiring. Although we've got the alternator power connected up, we need to go inside the car and make sure that it's connected so that it's gonna recharge our battery that we wind up putting in here. Next, we have uh, to actually hook up the power wires to our swap harness that came with the Honda swap ECU. 
and then I need to reinstall our fuel tank. Our fuel tank uh, was super corroded because this car hadn't run for like 10 years, so it was ugly and smelly and not, not usable. We need to pump some fuel through it, and then we should be able to fire this thing up. Uh, the only thing left will be a hooking up exhaust and the reverse lockout, but we don't need that for the first startup, so hopefully today we're gonna turn the key over, fire it up, and you guys are gonna love it. You guys are gonna poop your pants. You guys are gonna defecate. You guys are, I can't wait to start this thing up. We do anticipate uh, needing enough fuel to run this thing, particularly if we can get in the 500 horsepower range. So uh, we went and uh, visited AEM and got one of their cool new uh, high flow in tank fuel pumps that uh, has a really nice installation kit with rubber sleeves and new wiring and all the good stuff. We went ahead and installed that in our tank that I went down to a salvage yard and purchased uh, yesterday. That should hopefully give us enough fuel so that we can make mega horsepower. I think it's capable of making 500 horsepower. I think what's gonna require in order to do that is gonna require a different pulley. I think initially we're gonna probably be in the high 300s, low 400s. We should be able to uh, make some adjustments to uh, get uh, the kind of big horsepower we want. Also, these are safe for E85, and I think E85 is gonna, in the end, be uh, what's necessary when we uh, up the boost on this thing. I think that's about as good as it's gonna get, Scott. Yeah. I agree. No kinks. Well, now you show up. No. Now you show up. That's my secret. See what happens. Dump some fuel in it. We should be able to crank it and cross our fingers, toes, and other appendages. <laughs> I am gonna load in a program into our Honda JSWAP ECU that has the map sensor from an RDX. So that hopefully it fires up without difficulty. Nothing's coming through on the on data? Nothing's coming through on Honda. That's fantastic. How about the supercharger wine? What'd you think? It sounded pretty cool. It's, <laughs> it was pretty crazy. Hey, I want to thank you, Brian and Scott. You guys did almost all the work on this thing. That was great. So uh, we got this thing fired up. Um, I think we're going to, uh, next time out, we're going to, uh, we need to do some exhaust. We need to make sure all the fluids topped off and need to make an intake uh, air tube. Uh, and uh, I'm sure there's some other small things we need to do. Oh, hook up the shifter and the axles. 
Uh, but next video. Figure out Flash Pro. Oh yeah, we need to figure out the Flash Pro too. For some reason, one displaying. So I think there might be something wrong with the, the with the harness. So we'll check and see why the, it's not got two-way communication. But uh, we were able to load up a program with the uh, RDX map. Fired right up. Fired right up. Yeah, and uh, that was fantastic. Next video, we're going to take it to the dyno, and then we're going to take it to the strip. So uh, if you want to see more on this car, please like this video and hit the subscribe button so when we get out here with the next video on this, you can check it out and see what's going on. Wow, that's pretty cool. Thanks again, gentlemen. Yeah, it was most helpful. Uh, I was busy doing Hasport stuff. So, uh, well, guys, we'll talk to you next time. Thanks for clicking on us, and we'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>